what I carry in my drop shot lure bag. So it doesn't matter which bag you guys are using, but I use the, the gunky shoulder bag, which is that on there. And uh, I'm just going to go through now some of the things I carry with me when I'm drop shotting. So first things first, or a selection of hooks in different sizes, different makes. Um, I range from size six up to size 22. So they just stay in a little pouch at the front of my bag. Just like so. Second thing is fluorocarbon. Now, same as say, I've got plenty of different sorts of fluorocarbon and they range from 1.7 pound up to, which is this one, which is six pound. But essential when you're tying up on the bank, just have plenty with you guys. I also carry with me, which is one of them, which is a hook sharpener. Now, most hooks out the out the packet are ultra sharp, but a quickly, just a quick couple of turns on my hook sharpener, and I know that the hook is absolutely as sharp as it can get when I've put my rig on. A few other things that I carry with me are one is a set of scissors. That's for cutting my fluorocarbon when I've done my rigs, cutting the tag ends off them so, and also a pair of tweezers. Now these are for unhooking the fish. Obviously sometimes they do swallow the whole lure straight in, so you've got line on the hook to get out. So simple little method is just clip the hook, out she comes. So essential Peter kit. Now I carry with me just small boxes of lures. These are my small drop shot lures. So as you can see in there, there's plenty of different makes in there and different models as well. So I can just show you a few, which are my SS grass minnows, which are a nice little lure. I've got them in white and pink. I've got the Mabaru's, which are them. Got them also in green and yellow. I've also got some crazy fish stuff, which are of these. Now I don't use many paddle tails, but the SS grass may know on the crazy fish I do. I've also got the Babaru worms, which are them. But as, as you can see, they're all ranging from five to six centimeters each. But if if the fish are being a bit finicky, same as on the Mabaru's here, I will just cut them down, take that much off, so you're just left with basically the tail end like that and that uh, that's for the small fish when you're struggling to get a bite so as you can see they're all in their little compartments now the reason i keep them separate in compartments is as you're probably aware there's some certain lures that react differently with um, other lures so if you're putting them all in one section in in your boxes you can have problems with them degrading each other and also some of them can actually eat through the boxes. So what I tend to do is keep that nice and nice and full as you can see. But when it's running low, I also carry with me just packets of lures themselves. Now, the reason, I, as I've just explained, they do degrade when they mix with other lures. So keeping them in these little small packets, ju just a selection of your lures here, just keep them in the packets. They take up no room in the bag and it saves, saves you a lot of money when Unfortunately, you've put something in there that will degrade other lures. And basically, apart from my last little box, which are pre-tied hooks and drop shot rigs. Now, the reason I do this is it's quicker for me on the bank. That's why I put a loop on the top of the fluorocarbon for attaching it to my braid so I don't use a grinny to grinny I just use a loop because I use these little they are actually homemade and I've got li little tiny see there pins in them which hold onto the loop and then I tie, tie my rigs around them but as you can see there I also have some ready pre-glued which holds the lure in place for me if I'm on certain certain places where I know I need to keep that lure in one place and one particular size on the hook and a few more there so I keep them just in a little clip box and I keep them with me in my box as well so basically that's what I take with me when I'm drop shotting So what 
what tackle to use for drop shotting? Well, all you need is a light rod and a small reel. Now I've got a 0 to 5 to 7 gram rod here. This is the Grunky Street XL. It's actually a solid tip. Now, the reason I've gone for a light rod is you're holding it all day for one. So it's in your hand all day like that. You don't want anything very bulky. You know, it'll just tie your arm out, to be honest with you. Now, if you just have a look, what you're looking for in a drop shot rod, if you're doing light stuff, is a sensitive tip, just like that. You want to be able to feel every knock, every bang, and every little bite. So let's have a quick look what I've got on the reel. Now this is a 1500 reel. Ideally you want a thousand, but this suits me because of the way my rod has a gap there. And when I use my trigger grip, which is ideal for drop shotting, it allows you to put your finger onto that blank and feel every, every movement that's coming through in the water on the end tackle of your line and also any knock and bang and slight little bite you can feel absolutely everything coming through the braid now the braid i've got on here this is very thin it's 0.06 diameter braid it's actually 11 pound but it's ideal you don't want to go any heavier than that really with drop shotting but it's perfect it, it, it gives you a nice feel through the rod and the setup and then obviously i'll talk about a bit later in the video is your, your main end of your tackle, which is your leader going down with your drop shot rig on. I always use fluorocarbon and I'll talk about that in the next section. Thanks guys. The drop shot rig. Um, I've got one tied up here and I'll just talk you through it so you know exactly what we're on about in this video now that basically is a drop a drop shot rig as you can see there i've got a hook tied central in the line at 90 degrees i've got a weight on the end of the line and i've also got for me anyway i've got a loop there that attaches to my main braid so the drop shot now in all intents and purposes, what the drop shot does for you is it actually sits the weight right there on the bottom of the canal, river or lake or wherever you're fishing and it allows you to just tap your rod and import some action onto that lure. As you can see there, it's just a gentle tap with my thumb and that little paddle tail there is going crazy. So, first of all, the knot for the hook. Now, it's a bit fiddly on, on camera to show you, but this is a three turn over loop knot, which is basically, you grab your line, you thread your hook through this line, and then you make a loop with this line. And you see there, there's a loop. And you pass the hook three times through that loop. And then very slowly, and just wet it a bit, cinch it all down until you're right on the eye of the hook bit more wetting, tighten it up, and you end up with a 90 degree angle for your hook, which sits perfect like that. And that's absolutely smack on. Now, a lot of people use the Palomar knot, so it's whichever suits you. Find your own knot, whatever you're comfortable with, and whatever sits that hook nice in the right angle for you, it's perfect. So, why the weight on the bottom? Now, these weights, drop shot weights, have a little clip on them so you can just actually sit the line in the clip and tighten it straight up and it sits there perfect now this is ideal because with the drop shot as you can see there i've got about six inches so i'm fishing six inches off the bottom where i've been fishing now with that little clip there you can actually undo it bring your line down clip it back in and essentially then you've moved up in the water with that so it's easy to control your depth because you never know you, it's trial and error you'll you'll put your drop shot lure in they could be six inches from the bottom they could be three inches from the bottom they could be one inch from the bottom or they could be 12 inches up in the water so having that adjustability on the end there with that weight is absolutely crucial it's perfect for drop shot so essentially that's the drop shot setup 
and it is that easy guys get one made slap it on your rod go have some fun How to hook your lures. Right, for drop shotting, guys, um, I use three different ways of hooking my lures. So, what I thought to do is use a, a nice size six hook, so you can see it on camera, and just a basic drop shot lure. Now, the, the first way that I hook them, hook the lure is, is the thread method. So, you just nip the hook right into the end of the lure, like so, and you just thread it round the shank of the hook. Just like so, thread it down. Now when the hook's sitting, that's sitting nice and flush at 90 degrees. That's the first way I hook my, my lures. Now the second way is, especially if I'm using a paddle tail, um, is I'll nip hook them. So all you do with that is, is you just straight in to the side of the lure like so right to the bend of the hook and that's nip hooking that's really good when when the fish are you're getting finicky little bites so that's not a bad method that one and the third one now this does look a bit strange but if the fish are really on it you'll love this method and it's called wacky so middle of the lure same as again nip it on down to the shank of the hook, and it actually sits like that. But as you can see, that you'll, you'll get actions from both sides of the lures when you drop shotting. So, them are the three methods that I use to hook my lures. It's now time to put all these tips and little tricks together and show you how I um, actually use the drop shot method. So what I'll be doing is lowering it in slowly into the swim, nice and gently, keeping very still and just importing very small taps of the rod tip. As you can see there's no big movements the same as you do when you're jigging, it's just nice gentle taps. I'll give it about five or six little gentle taps and then I'll move it into the next part of the swim and I'll probably cover about two foot of the whole of the swim before I'll move on. I'll just drag it back now about 12 inches, lower it down again, nice and steady and just import six or five nice little gentle taps on the rod tip. And then I'll move on to the next part of the swim and I'll cover it in a block section. So I'm covering every possibility of where the fish could be. But if you get out there guys, just give it a go. It is good fun and if you do find some fish, it is an absolute killer method. So as you can see, there's no massive movements whatsoever. It's really finesse fishing. And it's just gentle taps 